Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this tutorial, I'm gonna give you an explanation of UV mapping in Blender and I will also do an example on my model from a reference image. And however, this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial and you don't need to have my model and my texture, but you can learn from it a lot and use the tips I will tell you on your own projects. This video is a beginner tutorial but it goes to uh, some intermediate tips but the beginners can learn it and make a progress. Let's see what we have. I have this mesh with a solidify modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. If I disable them, you can see it's just a extruded plane. And I have this texture which I want to put it on the mesh according to this reference. When I said it's just an extruded plane, I meant if we unwrap it, it gives us the exact shape of the mesh. If you don't know what the unwrapping is, I will simply define it for you now. So let's right click on this line and choose vertical split to add a UV editor window to our workspace. And I'm gonna add a plane to my scene, then go to the edit mode. And now when I hit A to select all, however, th there isn't anything except our plane. And I hit U and select unwrap. And it gives us the exact shape of the plane on the UV editor. But now I'm going to select one of the edge of this plane and extrude it, scale it, rotate it and so on to make some shapes. And after that, when I select everything again, the shape in the UV editor still remains a square. So what I'm going to do is select everything, press U and choose unwrap. And as you can see in the UV editor, our UV is changed to our mesh. So the simplest definition of unwrapping is when we unwrap something, we turn it to two dimensional surfaces. I said two dimensions. But what if we have a 3D object? As you can see, this plane is a 2D object because it has length and depth without height. So let's extrude it and try to unwrap it. I'm going to select all and press E to extrude it. Then again press A to select all. Then when I hit U and choose unwrap, this arrow will appear. And it says edge seams may need to be added. What does it mean? What is seam? Seam is going to be where our cloth or our 3D object separate to two parts or many other parts. And the line between these parts is the seam. For instance, let me hide this plane and add a plane to my scene. Then I'm going to edit mode and select all. Now we can see our square without any lines or something. But when I add a loop cut to the plane by Ctrl R, now when I hit A to select all, we can see this line between these two parts of our plane. But these two parts are not separated. And what should we do to separate them? We can select this line on the edit mode and press U, then choose Mark Seam. And again, press A to select all, press U and choose unwrap. Now, if we back to the UV editor and press L on one of these parts, it select that. Uh, remember this one, it's very helpful, especially when you have a lot of separated objects on your UV editor. Just hit L on one of them and it will select the whole part. I think you get what the seam does. And just in case, every time you add a seam, make sure you unwrap the whole object in order to it provides your seams let's avoid this plane and go back to our 3d object in this case i'm gonna add seams in the way to divide this 3d object to three separate surfaces the top part the bottom part and the part is between these two parts I'm going to select these three edges and mark seam them, then I unwrap the whole object and the UV editor show me these three separated parts. So let's back to the project and what we wanted to do. So I'm gonna to the shading workspace and it's probably like this for you, but I prefer to close these windows and create my own workspace. Here is my shader editor and uh, here is my UV editor. Okay. 
So as I said before, this shape is just an extruded plane. So I press tab, press A, U, unwrap and it's like this. It's very simple and just like this shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my texture here. I type image texture and open it up. Then I enable the node wrangler add-on before and I, then I press Ctrl T on this node. These nodes appears. Then when I connect the color of my texture to the base color of the principal BSDF, this texture will show. Now I'm gonna bring the texture here and back then according to the reference image these big signs are in the left side in the reference image but here they are in the right side or here however they are in the left side but after that we have nothing and we can't do this symbol here I'm gonna add a seam to separate these two parts just select the edge, press U, mark seam and select all, then unwrap it. Now we have two different parts on our UV editor. One part is where our symbol will be and the other part is the rest of the mesh. And now I'm just gonna select this big part, then rotate it, scale it down and place it somewhere like here. But as you can see, there is a repetition here that we can cancel it from here on the shader editor and our image texture node from repeat to extend. And I'm going to place my UV map at the right position uh, with play with the scale, rotation and change the place of it and find the best one. I must spend some time on it and I'm not going to talk a lot at these parts to take your time. And there is just a few more tips you should know. I will tell you and after that we'll be done. Make sure you avoid changing the place of the vertices which contain where you want to see in your texture because it deforms it. But in this case, because my background is black, I can change the place of the vertices which I don't want to see them and I will just change the place of them because I don't want to see other symbols too. And yeah guys, I told all tips and tricks I used for texturing this shoe. But the whole process can be boring and I'm telling you, I'm just adding seams and play with the scale of my UV maps, rotate them to find the most similar look for my texture. I hope you learned something useful and new and this is the end of this video but if you like this one and you want more tips and tricks on UV mapping on intermediate level or something let me know in the comments and I will make the part 2 of this video. From here to the end you will see some parts of my process and I will share with you the final result at the end. Thanks for watching and goodbye.